We've been saying for some time that governments will be looking for more ways to take away your passport and take away your freedom. Today, I'm going to share with you just another example of how they're doing that. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. I wanted to share with you an article. This comes from uh, GB News, Britain's news channel in the UK. And uh, the headline hopefully does not apply to too many people in our audience. But I want to read you part of this article and I want to share with you my thoughts, not only on this particular article, but on the broader scope of how governments uh, are looking to restrict your freedom of movement. And the headline of this article on GB News says, Passports to be removed from illegal drug users in Boris Johnson's new crackdown. The crackdown will also include football-style travel bans and harsher sentences for drug dealers. This is by uh, Gareth Milner, who says, The Prime Minister this week will launch a 10-year plan to tackle illegal drug-related crime, which will include removing passports and driver's licenses from offenders, it has been reported. The crackdown will also include football-style travel bans, and uh, if someone knows what that means, leave a comment below. Harsher sentences for drug dealers and measures to break up county line gangs. The Sun reported that Boris Johnson will outline record funding for addiction treatment and recovery services with more money promised for the 50 local authorities. More money uh, they don't have, by the way. With the worst drug issues, including Middlesbrough, Blackpool, and Liverpool. We need to look at new ways of penalizing them, things that could actually interfere with their lives, Mr. Johnson told the paper. So we will look at taking away their passports and driver's license. We're keeping nothing off the table. And the article continues. Now, uh, I am not someone, I have never used a drug in my life, and uh, for the record, I'm against crime, and I don't care who knows it. But you, know, you can argue, taking people's driver's licenses away, recovery treatment, addiction treatment, you can argue that. People will have opinions one way or the other. Uh, you can certainly look at countries like Portugal, you can certainly look at other countries around the world and see what they've done. Uh, that's not what we're discussing here. Uh, the issue at hand is, even if you could argue taking away someone's driver's license, what is the idea behind taking away someone's passport? Now, perhaps this is the more socially liberal side of me, but I, my opinion for a long time has been if you commit a crime, you should be sentenced if that requires going to jail, whatever the penalty is, you should serve your time, you should pay the price. And when you are done, when that service is spent, life should return to normal. You see things, especially where I come from in the United States, where it's like, now your life has to continue to be miserable. Now, should I as an employer have to hire you? Perhaps not. That said, I have had uh, a couple of clients who have hired, uh, recovered ex-felons, and they said they were some of the best workers they ever had. So certainly, there's, again, there's different schools of thought on that. But to say that uh, once you have served your sentence, you cannot get a passport, you don't have the option of traveling, you don't have the option of leaving the country, that seems a little bit draconian. Now, Perhaps there aren't that many other countries that would take you, and perhaps as the idea of nonstop travel on tourist visas becomes more difficult, countries like Mexico are now starting to crack down on that, uh, you know, you would eventually need to get some kind of residence permit or passport, and most of those do require you to show your criminal record, and many of them are pretty particular, quite frankly. So I'm not saying that uh, anyone should be forced to accept a criminal. People should be able to do business or accept whomever they want. But the idea that your country gets to say that you... Uh, were a drug, you were a drug user, you served your sentence, you're done, now you're out, and we're going to take away the fundamental human right of not allowing you to have a passport. That seems a little bit draconian to me, and I hope they don't go down that route. But uh, they're saying, hey, listen, we're going to look to do whatever it takes to interfere with their lives and to ruin their lives. Uh, that's now the policy of uh, the government in the UK. This is not the only oppor opportunity that governments have given themselves to take away your passport and take away your freedom. Uh, in the United States, if you have a seriously delinquent tax debt, the government can either refuse to issue you a new passport or cancel the one you've already got. Uh, there was some rumor out of Canada, or some innuendo perhaps out of Canada recently, as the new form for getting a Canadian passport came out, which indicated uh, on the to-do column, make sure you have the vaccine. Now, I, I think we've determined that that was more of a suggestion than something that you needed to provide to actually get the passport. But the point is that governments uh, have not shied away, particularly in the West, from 
saying, hey, listen, if you don't do what we want, we're going to restrict your freedom of movement. You've seen it in Australia in the last uh, almost two years now. You simply can't leave the country if you're a citizen or even not. And uh, you know, to me, you know, I've never really agreed with the United Nations on too many things. I'm not getting a lot of my talking points from them. But, you know, if you go back and look at their policies and what was agreed to, people should be allowed to leave their own country. They should be able to come back to their own country. And uh, again, I'm not trying to get into a debate here on, uh, uh, you know, political debate in terms of, uh, you know, when someone's sentence should be a certain, you know, deemed as spent. I'm certainly not trying to advocate people should use drugs or commit crimes or not pay their taxes. I am, as you know, repeat after me, the goody two shoes of the offshore world. We don't do that stuff here. We simply go where we're treated best. But, you know, from a perspective of reading the tea leaves, this seems rather negative. And to me, it's yet another reason why you want to have a second passport. Not because you're planning to not pay your taxes and get caught, but because you realize that government agencies make mistakes. And it's happened to me, where I paid the bill on time. They didn't realize I paid the bill on time. Another time, they lost my paperwork, and uh, I had to check and realize they hadn't got it, and I had to send it back in again. Uh, governments are inefficient. And if they cash your check, if they accept your money, they don't properly credit it, something goes awry, uh, perhaps you're not aware you've got a tax debt. And I've seen that happen to people before where they're like, of course I file my taxes, of course I pay my taxes. But, um, you know, there were times when they paid, uh, but the government didn't realize they paid. Or they paid and the government realized they paid, but the government didn't realize they filed. And so therefore the government said, well, wait a second, we thought you owed us more money. And so there's plenty of innocent reasons for this. There's also the fact that people can rehabilitate their lives. And, but there's also the fact that I think governments are going to start out with the concept of, hey, listen, it's just those drug dealers. Listen, I don't, you know, or not even drug dealers, drug users, uh, I believe it is. Drug users, illegal drug users, not dealers. Uh, again, listen, I, I've never done drugs. I don't advocate <laughs> drugs, obviously. Uh, and I don't... Uh, uh, you know, obviously, we can uh, we can debate that maybe <laughs> uh, these governments should not be spending all their resources going after somebody, uh, you know, sitting in the corner doing drugs. But this is where it's going to start. And we've talked about this financially. You want to talk about taxes? It starts with the evil billionaires. And eventually it makes its way down, either because inflation drives the, the limit to cover more people, uh, or simply because once the proverbial camel's nose is under the tent, uh, they can simply say, hey, did we say uh, 10 million means a wealth tax? Now we mean 1 million means a wealth tax. These are the ways that they are going to achieve scope creep, not only with your finances, but with your personal freedom. So having a second passport to protect yourself against innocent uh, issues. By the way, I was interviewed recently by a, uh, a Bitcoin publication, and they said, uh, hey, listen, what do you have to say to people who in the, in the crypto community, in the Bitcoin community, who, uh, who say, hey, listen, I'm not going to pay my taxes. I said, don't be an idiot. I said, just go where you're treated best. Take your, take your chips and go somewhere else. Follow the rules. I said, because forget the penalties in your, in your home country for, a moment for not paying your taxes. In many cases, if you're going to get a citizenship somewhere else, particularly by investment, you're going to have to check the box. Yes, I'm in tax compliance. And if you're not in tax compliance and it turns out and something later happens to you, uh, they could potentially denaturalize you. They could potentially take your citizenship away. You have broken the deal. Uh, this happened in the United States. Uh, people who've been naturalized there and misrepresented themselves. It's happened in many other countries, including Caribbean citizenship by investment countries. So it's not just about what happens in your home country that you can get away. If anything ever comes to light, uh, you're going to be in trouble. So I always encourage people to follow the law. I don't want there to be any lack of clarity on this. And, uh, you know, people occasionally come to us who, uh, uh, you know, we simply turn away who have uh, problems like this. But um, the issue is, that this can spread. The issue is you're starting to see governments saying, hey, listen, if you don't do this, you're not going to get a passport. Is that allowed under international law? Is it allowed under the, the things that they've agreed to? Perhaps not, but guess what? They're doing it. This is what I've said about countries like the United States. Hey, it's great. All the Americans tell me, hey, we've got a constitution. Does where you're living have a constitution? Uh, number one, generally yes. Number two, it's great to have a constitution. It's another thing for the politicians to follow it. And if they don't follow it, no one stops them. It's pretty much moot. This is another issue. Is anyone going to stop your government from saying, no, you can't get a passport. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You did do this. You did do that. No, you can't have one. This is why I think that if you want to be diversified, if you want to keep yourself safe, it's a good idea to have multiple options. 
Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.